Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris and this is Free PBX 101 version 15 part four, where we're gonna be talking about the initial setup wizard. But before we dive into this video, for all of your voice over IP needs, make sure you check out crosstalksolutions.com. We've got your phones, we've got your servers, we have full turnkey PBX installation services, that if that's what you want, as well as hourly support, uh, hosted PBX services, crosstalk SIP trunking. It's a one-stop shop for voice over IP. So if you enjoy these videos and you'd like to help out the channel, go to crosstalksolutions.com and check out all of our voice over IP offerings. So whether you're coming here from video two where you set up a bare metal instance of free PBX or from video three where you set up a hosted instance of free PBX, you're gonna end up here at the initial setup wizard. So let's go ahead and go through this initial setup wizard and get this server going. Username can be whatever you want it to be. I typically just use admin, but for security purposes, it would be better to use something that's not admin because admin's used as the you know main account for a thousand different types of devices out there. Uh, give your free PBX a strong password. This is the password that you're going to use to log into the GUI interface of free PBX. This is the username and password for the free PBX GUI. Next, we have our notifications email address. This is the email that you want to have notifications sent to, such as you know, disk space warnings, or you know, intrusion detection warnings, firewall warnings, anything like that is going to go to this email address right here. And then the system identifier is the name of your PBX. Now certainly you can leave this VoIP server if that's the only VoIP server in your organization, but I'm gonna give it a more useful name. You know, we always do some sort of unique name here in order to, you know, identify which server is which, especially when you've got, you know, multi hundreds of servers that you are managing. And now we get into the automatic updates. So, this is going to be something that's going to be up to your own discretion, whether or not you want to enable automatic updates. Uh, I would probably start off with email only for the regular module updates and then enabled for the security updates. So what this is going to do is it's going to notify you via email when there's non-urgent security modules in FreePBX that need to be updated. And a module in FreePBX is essentially just a you know small piece of software that's part of the FreePBX, uh, you know the sort of under the umbrella of the larger FreePBX interface. So for instance, voicemail is its own module. Ring groups are their own module. Queues are their own module. Backup and restore is its own module, right? And so there's hundreds of modules within FreePBX. And when an update comes out to any one of those modules, you'll get an email, or if you click enabled, you're gonna have that module installed automatically. Now the danger of having it enabled is if Sangoma ever comes out with a module that breaks some functionality in free PBX, like, you know, it can happen every once in a while if something wasn't properly QA'd or whatever the case might be, you might come into work and find a non-working free PBX and not realize that it's because of an update. Whereas if you have it set to email only, at least you'll get notified, and then you can install those updates during a proper maintenance window or when the PBX isn't you know, quite as heavily utilized. Then for the security updates, again, that's something that I leave enabled just in case a you know, zero day security exploit comes out for free PBX, you're gonna wanna push that update to the server as soon as possible. Uh, and then you can check for updates on any sort of schedule. So you can check every day, you can check during a certain day of the week, and then you can choose what time are you going to check. So we're just gonna say check every day between midnight and 4 a.m. Now the reason that they do between midnight and 4 a.m. is so that it's a random staggered time, right? There's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of instances of free PBX out there in the world. And if they all checked exactly at midnight, uh, you know, in a particular time zone, it could potentially overload Sangoma's server. So they do this between midnight and 4 a.m. It's kind of like your delivery window for, you know, when the cable guy's gonna show up, right? <laughs> but at least, you know, it will be within that window uh, at some point, some random time uh, within that four hour period. Okay, so now we're gonna say set up system. And here we are at the main FreePBX GUI login. So now we can click FreePBX administration and then enter the username and password that we just put into that initial setup wizard. 
and click continue. So now we're going to have to go through some additional steps the first time that we log in. The first thing that we need to do here is activate our server. You definitely want to activate your server because an unactivated server does not have the ability to have commercial modules installed, which we're definitely going to want. So we're going to say activate. And then you want to enter your Sangoma portal information. If you don't have a Sangoma portal username and password, they're free. You can sign up and I will have a link down below for where you can sign up for your own account. Once you've entered in your Sangoma username and password, you're directed to a screen that basically shows you, you know, your just wants you to verify all of your information. So you can just say continue. And now we are at the activation screen. So the way that FreePBX works in terms of activation is every instance of FreePBX gets a unique deployment ID. Now this deployment ID is something that you can move between FreePBX systems. The reason that you might want to do that is if you have purchased any of Sangoma's commercial modules, even something as simple as SysAdmin Pro, those commercial modules are tied to the deployment ID. So if you ever move, change servers, or switch to a different hosting provider or anything like that, you're going to want to take your deployment ID and move it to the new server so that you don't lose the commercial modules that you've already purchased. So if you don't already have a deployment ID, you can simply enter in a location name right here and then click activate. Or if you do already have a deployment ID that you want to reuse for this PBX system, you can click on existing deployment and then search for that deployment ID. And it's going to search within your Sangoma portal interface to find that deployment ID. In our case, though, we're just going to do a brand new activation and we're going to call this free PBX 101 version 15 test PBX. And we're going to click activate. Okay, so activation is complete. It is now checking for module updates. Now, look at all these updates that are available, right? There's a ton of them. Um, we're not gonna update now. So if you want to update now, you can click update now and go ahead and run these updates. But we're gonna be doing a video on how to update free PBX very early on in this series. And we're gonna be doing it via SSH instead of through the GUI. The difference is that when you run updates through the GUI, if there are dependencies, meaning that in order to install this module, you have to have this module installed first uh, as a dependency, you cannot do dependencies through the GUI, meaning that you have to run an update, then check for updates again, then run the update again, and if there's more dependencies, you have to check for updates again, and so on and so forth until you're all completely updated. However, if you do it through SSH, as we will show in this series, you it, it automatically resolves all dependencies you only have to run updates once so we're going to go ahead and click skip for now and the first thing it wants us to do is fill out our location information our language information all of these defaults are fine for me so i'm just going to leave that and click submit and now it says sangoma smart firewall is now enabled uh, it actually isn't quite enabled yet but we will be doing that in the next video when we talk about sort of the first things that you need to do after you install free pbx so we're going to say continue and then it gives us some information about the firewall that comes as part of free PBX. I certainly recommend that everyone use and love the free PBX firewall. It's definitely a great defense uh, against potential hackers. So we're going to say next and it says, should the client you're using be trusted? And it has my WAN IP address. So remember, I am setting this up in a Vulture hosted instance of free PBX. So that means that I'm coming to the server and it sees me as my WAN IP address. So sh should we trust my WAN IP address? If you're setting this up locally on your own LAN, it's going to ask you, do you want to trust your internal LAN IP address of your computer? Uh, in either case, we probably want to say yes here. And now it's asking me, should your entire network be trusted? So in my case, since I'm coming from a WAN IP address to a hosted server, no, I do not want my entire network, my entire slash 24 network to be trusted, right? Because that means that all of my neighbors that have similar WAN IP addresses to mine or in that same sort of class C subnet as mine uh, would then be able to get into my free PBX. They would still have to know the username and password and all that sort of stuff, but 
they would actually have access to see the GUI interface and attempt to log in. And I don't want that, right? I only want me to be able to log in. So I'm gonna say no here, but if you're setting this up locally on your LAN, it's usually okay to trust your entire LAN subnet, right? Because you're also gonna have phones connecting in from that LAN subnet, etc. cetera. Uh, and so usually you can say yes if this is local on your LAN, but if you're doing it hosted and you don't want your entire class C of WAN IP addresses to be able to connect into the free PBX, then say no. All right, enable responsive firewall. We're just gonna say yes here, but we're not gonna talk too much about the responsive firewall yet. We will get into that in a subsequent video. Do we want to automatically configure our asterisk IP settings? This is a very, very good idea. And we're going to double check these as one of the first things we do uh, once the wizard is completed. But for now, we're just gonna say yes. And then we say SIP station, SIP trunks free trial. We're gonna go ahead and skip that and say not now, but of course, you know, you can look into SIP station if you need some sort of SIP trunking. And there we go. We are now at the free PBX dashboard and we can start configuring free PBX. Now you'll notice up here in the corner, we have this red apply config button. I'm gonna go ahead and click that now to apply the configuration. However, keep in mind that you don't always have to click apply config after every single change that you make. There's a lot of changes that we're gonna be doing in free PBX and that apply config button basically pops up after almost everything that you do in free PBX. But you can do a whole bunch of stuff and then just click apply config once when you're all the way done. You don't actually have to click it every single time it pops up. All right, so let's take a quick look at our dashboard here. We can see welcome to free PBX. Here's the name of the server that we gave it. Uh, you need alerts or warnings or errors are gonna show up down here. Don't worry about anything that they, that's there right off the bat. We're kinda gonna go through that stuff and clear that out. Uh, and then we have some interesting X's like firewall configuration says it's not set up yet. Again, we're going to be setting up the firewall in the next video. Then we have some news feeds up here. We have some data usage. We can see ETH0 uh, usage. We can see our free PBX statistics. Once we actually start connecting phones and making phone calls, these statistics will be much more useful. And then here we have some uptime statistics. We can see that the server's been up for about half an hour, and here are our Linux load averages. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. There was a quick brush through the initial setup wizard. Uh, the next video, we're gonna talk about the first steps that you should be doing after you get past this wizard and get into free PBX. All right, we will see you in the next video.